Last December, I spoke to the Alachua County Commission about the geoengineering aerosols that are stealing the sunlight and polluting our county. The commission asked me to make a presentation to EPAC, the Environmental Protection Advisory Committee, chaired by Dr. Bob Palmer. So here we are. Right. And now after, we had a couple of very busy meetings the last couple of months, and I thank you for your patience. Oh, this, this is very important stuff. Uh, but anyway, the floor is yours. Uh, we, we are really bringing this item mm -hmm. as, a, as an issue so big that we don't know where to start. However, there are some impacts to the coffers of the county and city treasuries that may be affected by the fallout from this operation that's going on, uh, called uh, stratospheric geoengineering. And, and the argument is settled that this operation is going on, that we do have artificial clouds that don't have water in them, but we do have a dimming, a significant dimming event. If you saw any of the information there, up to 60% of Wigington's solar array, and he's the energy expert, if everybody watched it, you know what I'm saying. Uh, he says that this, this aerial obscuration is uh, beginning to affect his solar array. And he's measured it. Uh, so that's, that's one consequence of this operation that has not been addressed by municipalities or county governments. Uh, so it's, a, it's kind of a national issue with consequences to local governments. Um, and we're looking for advice on how to grapple with it. Consequences to public safety, to fire control. If we are seeing aluminum oxide falling into, into the, to the woods, uh, we're looking at an accelerant uh, for flash fires. Uh, my first thought is to rule out the scenario that's happening in California that we saw in the video uh, by testing the soil, by testing the air with HEPA filters, and, and trying to reproduce their experience here in Alachua County to rule it out. Because what they see in their skies is exactly what we see in our skies. And if it's happening because of the the load of aerosols that is in their skies, then we have to make an assumption that that could be happening here. Why don't you tell us what happened there for those who haven't seen the video? Uh, I actually don't recall that. Problem. Okay, I'm going to start at, uh, this will take 12 minutes to That's go good. through the Wigington. That's fine. Yeah. And everybody will be on board with this. Right here in Northern California at Dane Wigginton's house, he owns over 2,000 acres overlooking Lake Shasta. He told me about some of the challenges that they're having up here. That you know I have a background in the energy fields. Uh, I worked in the first solar plants in the continental U.S. in the early 80s. My home was on the cover of the world's largest renewable energy magazine, so this is my background. My goal uh, has been to alert the public there is a mountain of toxic material falling on us, period. Before, about five years ago, our skies were typically blue, and now you see it's covered with lines and haze, and virtually nothing you see on the horizon, nothing you see in the sky above us is a natural cloud. I mean, it is, it is virtually all the remnants of these aircraft lines that you see uh, fanning out, spreading into clouds, uh, artificial clouds, but the sky is a very dirty look to it. Uh, there's not the white cloud blue sky that we had only a few years ago, but it looks like there's some sort of massive industrial activity or forest fires burning over there, and we see that typically every night. And on certain days you can see these trails actually dropping vertically like a veil. Uh, we assume the particulates are descending, and, and we have the test to prove that uh, we are being inundated with uh, levels of aluminum and particulates that are literally tens of thousands of times what would already be considered high. So we're not talking about uh, exposure to uh, a, a slight percentage higher of, of these toxic materials. We're, we're talking about quantities, for example, off the side of Mount Shasta. If you can pan back, that's a, that's a landmark in Northern California, considered to be a pristine water source. Uh, aluminum, or snow sample off the side of Mount Shasta tested 61,000 parts per billion. This is just ordinary snow water. And people are drinking this stuff when they're hiking on the mountain. And remember, government action is required at 1,000. This is 61 times over the government limit, and our hikers are drinking this poisonous water on Mount Shasta Mountain oh itself. God. Barium, 83. Strontium, 383. So this summer, the people climbing are drinking poison. Uh, basically, I, I certainly wouldn't want to drink 61,000 micrograms per liter of aluminum. And again, we, we've already seen in five years soil pHs in this area that have escalated 10 to 12 times, and we can prove that conclusively. Well, this is not speculation. We can prove conclusively that these metals have been in the rain. We have duplicate samples. Bachelor of Science in Forestry, International School of Forestry at Missoula, Master's in Zoology, specialized in aquatics, 
35 years with the U.S. Forest Service as a wildlife biologist, and before that, uh, several years with the USDA Soil Conservation Service as a soil conservationist. Also have run the botany programs, uh, range and grazing programs, and I continue that today. Right now I do a lot of master gardener consultation work. When I started this garden back in about 2005 or so, the pH here was 5.5, 5.6. This is the old soil survey of the county. Mm -hmm. You can look at the page right here. This is my soil right here. Mm -hmm. It's a Dietz 125, 126 here at my house. And here, the soil reaction, pH, should be between 4.5 and 6.0. And over there in the pure mud, it's even a little darker. It's 6.8 right there. And, and what can this do to plant life and ecosystems? Well, you haul one of these things out and you start looking at the little little things that are crawling around the soil, a lot of times they aren't there anymore. The uh, little soil arthropods that you can barely see on a microscope, you can actually see movement with this. Little tiny, tiny, tiny macroscopic, look like little moving pieces of dust. Those start to go away. They're not gone entirely, but they start to go away. This is black oak acorns. You know, this is, this is pieces of cedar wood. You know, come on, folks. This should be very acid, and I'm getting 10 times higher than expected. There's something really wrong here. You can see all those uh, reports, you lots of them. have over 20 reports here. Uh, well, at least 20. I'd say it'd be closer to 30. All revealing dangerous amounts of aluminum and barium. You know, the science is there that something funny is happening. And the naysayers say, well, so what? Isn't neutral good? Well, no, neutral's not good. Neutral is not good. If your soil is supposed to be 5.6, it should stay 5.6 if you want the forest to be healthy. And if you want to grow a good garden, you have to keep your pH around 6.0, 6.5. I think that we just need to wake up and just look at what's happening because we can't just ignore it because it's going to get worse and worse if we just keep ignoring it and pushing it away like, oh, that's nothing. There was mason jars and they were brand new, sterilized, and that's what we catch the rain in. Mm -hmm. And then there was a HEPA filter that we tested the air with. Okay, so you caught rain and then you, you basically filtered air. What did you find? Aluminum and barium. Here's another test that's revealing 375,000 yeah. parts per million aluminum, barium at 3,090, and strontium at 345. Yeah, that's from a lined pond. With EPDM fish safe pond liner, there is no chemicals, manufacturing materials at all in that pond liner that's uh, available to the aquatic life. It's designed for that purpose. The well that feeds this pond has been tested and retested. ND, no detectable aluminum, zero. The only other place this pond can receive water is rainfall. We are located on a filtered forested hilltop, miles and miles and miles away from any industry, highway, and so forth. After several heavy spray days, there was a film that we, we received form on the surface of the water, and we tested that crust, and it was uh, aluminum and barium, that after a year and a half's accumulation had 375,000 parts per billion of aluminum in it. It's literally toxic. We can say, conclusively that what we see in the sky matches expressly what's outlined in numerous patents and the materials on the ground match those patents. This material was not there five years ago. It is a recent phenomena in the quantities it's in. It, it has excavated in some cases 50,000 percent in five years in the case of aluminum. From our original baseline reading of seven parts per billion which was already high, it has escalated up to 50,000 percent in five years. So we've seen profound changes in that time. Dr. Leonard Time, um, PhD in chemistry, I cross-checked with him and he says the oxides of aluminum, barium, and strontium will drive your pH into the coastal from an acid soil like this up into the neutral. There's no question about it. And, and that's exactly? That's exactly what you see happening. Wow. I have a doctorate in inorganic chemistry from Oregon State University mm -hmm. in which I was working with different metals and oxidation states mm -hmm. and then did a postdoctorate work at Brandeis where I was working stabilizing off oxidation states of different metals. The goal is to sort of figure out how everything fits in the dynamic equilibrium of life. I was working with Francis up in uh, Mount Shasta and he showed me some rainwater analyses that had to do with levels of aluminum, strontium, and barium in the atmosphere. So I feel the major toxin in these chemtrails is the aluminum. And from the levels we were looking in at Mount Shasta, this is totally, totally unacceptable. When you get to metals and biological systems, you're no longer talking about the bulk aluminum that people think about when they're using, drinking from soda pop cans and that. 
So once it gets to the aluminum oxide stage, it just forms a plaque within your arteries mm -hmm. and shuts down life. And so as you accumulate aluminum over time, mm -hmm. it causes major neurological damage because it ends up as aluminum oxide that's essentially stuck in place and can't be flushed out by normal systems. Wherever the material is coming from, it is there. The amount of metal falling on us cannot be disputed. Absolutely, this is not speculation. Mike, the reason I've chosen to, to focus so primarily on this issue is I feel all other issues are secondary. What could be a greater priority than not being able to walk out your door and take in a breath of air without sucking up heavy metals? If our land base is being poisoned, if our waters are being toxified, what will we have left to work with? Whatever we choose to focus our time and energy on, whatever our political beliefs, that this is a common ground for all of us. We, we must have air that we can breathe that's not full of toxic chemicals and metals. We must have water that's not completely laden with whatever is being emitted from these aircraft. And if people stopped to consider that the atmosphere is as thin as a layer of paint on a basketball, it is an extremely thin layer that allows life to exist on this planet. To simply treat it as a physics lab and experiment with it until it is broken beyond repair is folly of, of unbelievable proportion and if people understood that this sort of experimentation not only is going on but has been going on for a very very long time uh, going back 50 years there's been uh, countless climate manipulation weather modification programs that the, the vast majority of the public is completely unaware of and if they think that that this is not true that certainly they would, that somehow they would have known if it was occurring I, I would ask them to to look at things like agent orange and the things that, that governments do because they can because there's no one to stop them because they have uh, these, these huge military machines that, that um, want to control everything. And in fact, the government's own document, perhaps you may have seen, it's available to any online, is called Owning the Weather, an express goal of our government, and not just our government. Well, first, we're going to do what we can. Let's see what we can do. You've got the scientists behind you. The scientists are with you, so uh, at least this scientist is with you. I may not have a million dollar budget, but I've got enough to show that something's been fully wrong. You got it. All right. So Arizona will be... Well, let's, let's actually, that's a good point, and for the benefit of our cameraman here, yeah. let's summarize, actually, what I hope were some helpful suggestions that we made since you asked for advice. One is the one Knox just made about accessing local soil yeah, data. Um, you know, I made the offer, whatever issues you think would be useful to raise with mm -hmm. what I think are the premier atmospheric scientists in the country, I am happy to do in the next 10 days. So we made that offer to you. I made a suggestion you try to access the acid rain database, which would have data on Certainly aluminum, okay. um, certainly pH, and a lot of other chemical constituents over most of the U.S. for the last 30 years. Okay. A massive database, lakes, surface waters, and everything else. Um, what else? Lake Watch here in Florida ah, okay. has a long uh, rep there Excellent. of lakes throughout right. the state of samples that they mm -hmm. take monthly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just, you know, I'd like it on the record that we have at least tried to make some helpful suggestions. Okay, that's good. That's fine. So let's, let's put that on the record. Um, if we can, then, um, and thank you for your presentation, appreciate it, um, and hopefully some of that will be Well, helpful. don't stop with this because there's much more that I don't even know how to present. It's, 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 a, it's in such scientific detail that I wouldn't do it any credit. And I don't think any of us here, at least certainly me, would put it past the feds there. <laughs> So do you do you do you but the, the problem the problem is that we have to acknowledge that we are underneath some kind of an operation that is not being disclosed. First of all, there's a huge audience out there interested, not just here locally, but worldwide in this issue of chemtrails. And we want to thank the Alachua County uh, EPA for opening up this dialogue with us. And we want to thank you and encourage uh, this sort of dialogue to continue elsewhere in the world. And um, we're, th we're so thankful that you guys took the time to hear our spiel and that you took the yeah. time to look at some of the evidence and we hope we can continue this working uh, dialogue with you guys. So thank you so much. We just got done meeting with our local Alachua County Environmental Protection Agency and we thank them for taking a look at chemtrails, a serious issue that concerns us, not just locally but worldwide.